What is the reason why ATR 600 auto speed function on takeoff maintains V2 plus 5 knots on liftoff instead of V2? This is one of the questions I will answer today. So stay tuned. Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magna Nordal, I'm an ATR captain and instructor. And this is Q&A number 20. Only four questions, but they are quite interesting. So let's go ahead. What is the glide ratio of ATR 72600? I am told it is 15.8 to 1. Uh, I also tested it in a simulator before and I measured 16 to 1, which is incredibly close. So 15.8 to 1 should be the correct answer. And that means both propellers are feathered, flap zero, and you're flying at Whiteberg plus 10. Next. Hi Magna, I just wanted to ask you if memo items of engine fire takeoff, it is written at captain measured of the affected engine, not below 400 feet HDL. Can you tell me why it is 400 feet HDL, why not 500 feet or higher? Uh, this is the regulation. If you have an engine flame out at or after V1, you will continue takeoff, climb at V2 speed up to 400 feet where you can accelerate and uh, retract the flaps and continue climbing. Um, it's not above ground level, it's 400 feet above the runway elevation. The clearance to the terrain is in fact only 35 feet all the way plus 0.8% of the travel distance. So for one kilometer, you should be eight meters higher. Not much, but that's the regulation. It's up to the operator to decide a higher acceleration altitude. Here in Maldives, you use 500 feet, easy to remember. Some companies use 1000 feet, no issue with that. Um, so the captain may choose to shut down the engine earlier than acceleration altitude, if but not below 400 feet because we don't want the fire to burn more than necessary. Okay. Next. Hello, Magnai. Regarding the ATPCS, why on the 600 you have to reject the takeoff if it isn't armed, but on the 500 you could still continue? Um, that is not correct. The takeoff briefing, as given by ATR, is let's say the first officer that is pilot flying. Then you will brief any failure before V1. You call stop and stop the aircraft. That means the captain will stop. Uh, if you don't see the ATPCS arm light, you have a failure. Therefore, you have to stop. But that was not specified in the flight crew training manual. But in the updated manuals, it is written if ATPCS not armed, takeoff must be aborted. I think this update came after the accident with TransAsia 235. During takeoff roll, the ATPCS arm went out, but they didn't stop. And then the arm had come back. It's never a good thing when some indication go on and off. So they decided to continue. And at about 1000 feet after takeoff, that was still below acceleration altitude, by the way, they got an uncommanded auto feather. And there was a lot of confusion in the cockpit and they ended up shutting down the good engine. And that led to the accident. What are you supposed to do if an engine fail occurs after V1 and ATPC somehow does not kick in? So there is no auto feather and auto up trim. Thank you. The procedure for engine flame out is the pilot monitoring will check you have uh, up trim, that means uh, power on the good engine increases 10% more. If not, you move both power levers to the ramp to get that power. You check the auto feather, but it's not mentioned anything in the manual. I think that's a political thing, but you can use common sense, right? And you also switch off the bleed valves because uh, to allow you to get maximum power. That's the procedure and it's written down in the manual. Okay, and last question. 
What is the reason why ATS 600 auto speed function on takeoff maintains a V2 plus 5 knots on liftoff instead of V2? What are the instances where auto speed will remain V2? We use V2 plus 5 to reduce the drag because we are on the bad side of the power and drag curve. So by increasing the speed a little bit, you get a better climb performance. Uh, some companies, they or other aircraft types, you, they use V2 plus 10, you can use up to V2 plus 20, as far as I know, and all for better climb performance. But of course, you need a bit little longer runway, takeoff distance, to achieve that. V2 is not a fixed value. It can vary a lot depending on the situation. When you have no limit runway, it uh, selects a standard uh, V2 is uh, 1.22 of uh, reference stall speed, but it can be as low as 1.13 and up to 1.35 of reference stall speed. Uh, V2 must also not be below VMC multiplied by 1.1, which depends on the available power of the aircraft. So there you have it. V2 is not a fixed value and when you have a restricted runway, you will uh, need a performance calculation. We use uh, an app called the SPS, Single Point uh, Performance uh, Software, and uh, that will give exact uh, correct V2 for those conditions. And that we enter then into the FMS, and the FMS will set the auto speed to that V2 plus 5. That's how it works. That's all I have this time. Um, the next Q&A may come a bit later, maybe after two or three weeks. I am uh, involved in a couple of projects and you will see some uh, changes coming up soon. And I hope you will like it. Until then, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy learning. Approaching minimum. Thank you.